Hello. Uh... Hello, everyone. I don't know why I stopped that. That was so abrupt. I was like, just, just cancel it. Cancel- Oh my gosh, I left my fan running. One second. I'll be right back. Honestly, like, what? I can't do anything. Okay, listen. Uh, I got this cooling blanket from Costco. It's got, like, special fibers or something. I don't know. And it's supposed to actually keep you cool. So I, uh, I like it so far. Because I feel like I can wear a blanket in the summer. And I love, I love having a little blanket on my lap. Uh, actually... Hello this time. I'm not gonna do it. Sorry. Uh, I hope everyone had, um... I, I hope everyone had a really good Monday, a really good weekend. Sorry that it decided that it's already gonna cut out OBS. Good, it's shit. Uh, vibe, welcome in. Hello, vibe. Hello, Anvilator. Hello, Jack. Jack, it's okay that you didn't think of any secrets. I know, like, how difficult it is. That's why I just give you, like, a stream of consciousness. And I'm just like, this is what I'm going with. Uh, Kelly, hello. Welcome in. At, it's so good to see you. Uh, thank you. I really like my hair. I've been feeling it a lot. Um, it's a little difficult at work because some days, like, I'm just so pissed at it. But then I just, like, tie it back, clip it up. Like, it's, it's a whole thing. Uh, hello, Jolo. Welcome in. Um... Okay, listen. This one is actually Jack's fault, uh, if I'm being honest. This this uh, topic, because I was watching his stream, and then <laughs> I was watching his stream Saturday, and I came in, and he was like, we're talking about the Lord of the Rings Golem game, and I was like, son of a bitch, I want to talk about the Golem game. <laughs> So I sat there with my little iPad and Jack is on part of it and my like writing is open on the other part and I was like furiously typing away and the barista man was like, you good? And I was like, no, I got things to do. I got thoughts to get down. It's very stressful. Uh, but I wasn't actually ready for any of this until approximately 20 minutes ago. I had Jolo actually up at the end of his stream and I had checked in and I caught like literally I think the last like three minutes of it. But I was there and I was like pulling up um, all the information that needed. So yeah, it is the Golem game and it is your fault uh, because I think it's actually a really good idea to have the conversation about like what happened? Like, I know we talked about, like, how our game's, like, good or whatever. But I think there's actually, like, a defense to be made for bad games and their place in the industry. And I have a small smidgen of evidence for this, so. A lot of things is Jack's fault, and somehow he's still not blamed for any of it. Because he's cute. It's true. Jack's very cute. Uh, anyways... Hold on, I'm gonna I'm gonna pause this. I'm gonna slap that record button in Audacity so we have that nice isolated audio. Um everybody let me know how your weekend was, how your Monday was, whatever. We're just gonna like talk while we do this. Hey, look at that. Uh so the first game obviously that I wanna talk about is Lord of the Rings Golem. I don't know exactly what happened i don't think i know what this game is though like i'm gonna be honest because i was reading a review i skimmed one and what did it say the lord of the rings golem is a stealth action and platform adventure the stealth game i thought this game was if i'm being honest i thought the game was um a game where you just talk to Gollum, and I was like, "Well, that's shit. Why, why, why would anyone ever play that game?" I thought, "I oh wow, there's some fiery takes here. Worst game of the year so far. All right, penguins, good to know." 
Your Monday's okay. You're walking to the mall. Ew. How are you even going to carry things back? I didn't even know this was a thing. I guess there was like a, a gameplay reveal 10 months ago. I had no idea that Lord of the Rings Golem was going to be a thing. Hold on. I don't know if this will have any gameplay. We've got a we've got a lot of tabs. You can't see them. We've got a lot. Questions. Three ways to silence them. Fear. Knife. Very effective. Answer. Which one do you think we should apply? A creature <laughs> the Dark Lord himself has touched. I would have bought this game, maybe. The graphics are kind of shit. If this was like a $40 game, I think I would have bought this. Maybe even without review. I w I'm not like a big pre-review buyer, but I mean, you get to play as Gollum. Rudy's a huge Lord of the Ring fan and he's not going to get it. Well, <laughs> I don't blame him, obviously. What did the Dark Lord want from him? It does look like an Xbox game. Xbox 360, PS3. It's... You it's... are my monster now, and monsters don't make friends. There is no hope for him, I fear. The creature is lost. Cruel orcs, cruel men. What has Smeagol ever done to them? You know what this looks like? Um, terrible voice acting. It's a perfect storm for dog shit. It kind of is. The Lord of the Rings Gollum reminds me of um, Abe Abe's World or whatever. Not Abe's Abe's Odyssey. Uh, whatever. It was like a really old like PS. Two game maybe odd world that's what i'm thinking of um for some reason i like see that game and not so much like the gameplay but the concept of it if someone told me it's like odd world rebranded i think i'd believe them uh oh they're doing a new odd world oh they did one already okay well that's something yeah, Oddworld is good. I remember playing it as a kid a lot and also being scared of it, though, as a child. So that's not productive. I have heard of this game briefly a long time ago, but that's just because I'm a Lord of the Rings nerd. I thought it was a joke and not an actual thing. <laughs> they were going to make a Gollum game and you were like, that's that's a joke. That's a joke. Um, The new one, Soulstorm, isn't so good. That's, that's a little unfortunate. I would have hoped that they uh, kind of brought this together. I don't know. I it's it's solid. So there's like over a hundred. No, there's close to a hundred critics and users. So we're not gonna go through all of them. But I thought <laughs> I thought this one was interesting because they gave it a ten out of ten. Every other review is like. Absolutely not. Look, a five, a one, a zero, zero. The users were harsh on this game. They were like, do not buy this game. The game is dog shit. And to be fair, the outlets weren't much nicer, but they were a little nicer. Like, Gaming Trend gave it a 70. Um, I love this, though. I am absolutely loving this game. It features one of the most original stories in the Lord of the Rings franchise, and the gameplay is fun and exciting. Sure, there are some bugs here and there, but they will be patched quickly enough. The Dalek isn't the first studio to fall victim to a greedy publisher setting an unreasonable deadline, and it won't be the last. However, this is a genuinely fantastic game that will delight true fans of the Lord of the Rings franchise and leave the haters, losers, and fairweather fans by the wayside as they cry and whine about things like Gollum is ugly. Oh, really? Was Timothy Chamelet not available for the role? And the graphics are bad. Tell me, how were the graphics in the original J.R.R. Tolkien novels again? <laughs> Despite not having even played the game. <laughs> Give it a chance and you... <laughs> you too, like myself, might find yourself 
cradling the PS5 disc as you roll around half naked around the house in delight eating raw fish and saying my precious in much the same manner as Gollum TM himself from the movie. I think there's like a lot to unpack with that review. <laughs> but they, I, I actually do think they have good points. Um, mainly the point of, uh, I, I think it's fair to say that, you know, a studio fell victim to publishing a game that wasn't ready. That's like almost every game. Recently. We're going to talk about a lot of games that weren't ready to be published and a lot of games that were republished and then just like were shit apparently and didn't go well. Um, so <laughs> yeah, for spending 70 pounds. I cannot believe the price of the game. I think that's what, like, really catches me off guard the most is it never looked to me like a game that was, like, AAA pricing. And I'm not even sure what, like, what our really decision factor is for a game that's expensive and a game that's not. Because I've played a lot of independent games that it's like, I think we should have to pay, like, full price for this. But then I've also played a lot of games that were full price and we're like well that really wasn't worth my money but that's fine that's fine they got greedy because of the ip i agree i think so i think they got greedy and i think they got complacent and i don't think it's good that it happened in the time that it did because the lord of the rings christopher tolkien dead he died in 2020 i think just before covid really happened uh, which was darrow tolkien's son was very protective of the ip and that's why we didn't really get a huge amount content out of the lord of the rings universe uh because he hated the films <laughs> he actually i'm pretty sure he actually went on record saying i hate the films i think they did a shit job which to be fair if you read the book they literally left out random characters and merged other characters so i'm not really sure what was up with that decision um i think like boromir a lot of his lines actually come from faramir his brother terrible naming convention by the way but it is what it is uh, so Faramir just was gone, and there's that kooky little guy who jumps around the woods that they, like, meet at one point, and he's just not there either, and he's actually considered a lot of people's favorite character, and they were just like, kick him out. Don't worry about it. Um, so I think it has really poor timing, because I'm concerned, at least, that the person who's now in charge of the Lord of the Rings IP is going to turn around and say, okay, you guys actually can't make things. So to be fair, there's not a lot to defend with Lord of the Rings Gollum. I think it's just important to understand like why I'm like, oh, we should defend bad games. It kind of started with this. Maybe a little bit. I I have not played this game. I will not play this game for full price. I think it's absolutely way too expensive. Uh, but it's interesting because I started actually digging through a lot of famous IPs. Um, and ones that have a good reputation to figure out like do do they have bad games in them uh the halo franchise the answer is basically no except for halo wars 2 is 70 something on metacritic uh i checked like gears of war the last of well obviously not the last of us there's only two but i started going through franchises that i remember growing up with and there's not really a lot of bad games i guess there are more mediocre ones and you could say that for like mario and sonic but I know Sonic has been kind of on a slippery slope for a while. I don't really think any of the Sonic games have been, like, bad, though, recently. I just think they've been eccentric. <laughs> it was supposed to be on Game Pass. I guess they pulled it thinking they'd make more from sales. I'd play it if it was on Game Pass. Well, maybe. I don't, I'm not a stealth game person. But I, would, I would play it for five minutes. Tom Bombadil, that's exactly who I'm thinking of. I remember reading the books for the first time and thinking, who the hell is this guy when I got to Tom Bombadil? I was like, why is why is this even here? Um, interestingly enough, one of the franchises that I found that actually had a bad rating on a game is Mass Effect. Well, and let's be fair, bad is like 70. It's not that bad. For the, the critic score, for the user score, it's like 5.1, which is pretty bad. Uh, and 7... Giving a game a, like a 7 out of 10 is kind of a death sentence in the gaming industry, in my opinion. 
I think Mass Effect Andromeda had the backing from the franchise already. It didn't really have to worry about this. So this was the last game that came out in the Mass Effect franchise. I don't know if they have more planned. And I think it's a prequel. I don't know if that's true. Um, and to be honest, the critic reviews that are on the site, I don't really know how to feel about Metacritic because I feel like it never has enough critic reviews. Like, it's just... <laughs> it's 37 reviews, and that's it. And that's that's how we're deciding that it is an average of 770-something. Um, this person really hated it. Game critics. Bioware has often shown more willingness than most AAA developers to respond to community criticism, and they're already pushing patches to rectify Andromeda's many issues, so I'm not pronouncing the Mass Effect series dead just yet. Well, that's great. Andromeda was released in a really poor spot. There was a ton of backlash against the Mass Effect 3 ending. It had some texture issues on launch for sure. Also set in a different universe space term rather than the not a prequel, different story. Thank you, Jack, for the context. Uh, so not a prequel, different story. <laughs> I, I really don't follow Mass Effect that much. I just thought it was very interesting, this one. The others are under the must play. Like, I guess Metacritic now has like this must play thing. Actually, I'll show you guys. I've never seen this badge before on Metacritic. Uh, I, it's probably not new. I probably just don't use Metacritic enough. But yeah, there's a must play on Mass Effect 2. Mass Effect 3 doesn't have it, actually. And the first Mass Effect has must play. <laughs> uh, Mass Effect 5 continuing the story of Commander Shepard from the trilogy is currently being that's really interesting um, I don't know how I feel about that we already have like a really big space thing going on with Halo that's good enough I, I don't that's good enough they kind of botched that one eventually I'm not sure if we really want to see another space um, trilogy being botched I guess that just doesn't feel like a great. Uh, vibe to your comment about the dwarves on, in Lord of the Rings. There is a dwarf Lord of the Ring game coming out. I don't remember what it is exactly, but it's like a little um, a little mining game that you play with your friends. I'm pretty sure. like I think it's like a four player game. It it looked interesting. Like it looked very good, but I didn't I didn't follow it a lot, and I don't know if it's coming out yet. Mass Effect kind of set the precedent for the story based space <laughs> opera, though. I love, I admitted this uh, to one of my friends who absolutely loves to read all the time, Jenny. And I told her, I said, I will give, I, I'll like, she, I was telling her, like, I don't really have like a good book to read right now. I've been working on this one series that absolutely broke my heart in the first book. So it's taken me years to get through this trilogy. Uh, they just killed my favorite characters. Um, and I've been trying for a long time to get through the trilogy. It's my favorite high fantasy ever written, though, by far. Like, I think it's actually really... Uh, let me get the author's name because there's too many Terrys. I always mess it up. Uh, Terry Brooks. I'm reading the Sword of Shannara trilogy. Uh, not to just sidebar real quick. <laughs> but it was published in the 70s. And the first Sword of Shannara... Um, like the original, the original one was basically an all male cast, and the second one was really it. It ended on it ended on a cliffhanger. The first book ended on a cliffhanger, and I was like, "What?" Like it's literally like they're off to do something else, and I was like, "Okay, I obviously I need to start the next one immediately." And I'm reading the foreword to the book, and Terry Brooks uh, wrote a had written a manuscript and sent it to his agent and his agent was like look if you want if you want to publish this story that's fine you can it's dog shit you'll never sell another book he's like this one will sell because your first one was so popular he's like you will never sell another book passes i'm telling you this now it is so bad and terry was like oh he was like well how do i fix that and the agent was like, first of all, you need to rewrite everything. Here's all the plot holes. Here's everything that's wrong with it. He wrote him basically a novella back and was like, this is what I hate about the book. He's like, second of all, you need to make female leads in the book. There's no one does female leads. And so there's actually a lot of female characters in the Elfstones book, which takes place quite a bit in the future from the Sword of Shannara. 
So it's very jarring to go from a little cliffhanger to all of a sudden you're in the elf stones of Shannara. And these are like characters like one or two generations down the line. I was like, what the fuck is going on here? But anyways, it's a really good book. But my favorite genre is what I'm trying to get to of reading books is actually space operas. Like those really horrendous paperback, like 200 pages tops books. And they will be like nine in a series. I will like pump those out in a day like I'll just be like reading non-stop there's something about like a space opera that just like absorbs my soul and it's like you this is now your whole personality this is everything you're going to do. uh so I feel like I actually would enjoy Mass Effect maybe if I tried to sit in and play it but there's too much talking I don't like doing the Citadel everything when I watched Mass Effect Mondays everything Jolo said is basically what I agree with I'm like I don't like half of this game <laughs> so why would I play it when I just watch someone hate hate play it essentially i it's i loved i loved mass effect mondays i don't know like how to live my life on monday anymore without them but it it i didn't need to repeat that for myself i see and that's the thing is like yeah the lore and the story are deep but you have to play the game and i don't i don't want to play that game i miss the days of a shooter with a story that is what I think I actually want the most out of video games now. He says, I want something like Halo and I want something like um, Gears of War, like very story driven shooter games where like you're given a cut scene. In I really actually like playing like Warhammer Dark Tide when you get to like a cut scene. I like watching the cut scenes. I like like that's a cute story, but then I just get to go punch things in the face. That's what I need from it. I don't need an RPG. That's too that's too much. That's too much story. I think a Bioware resurgence would be very interesting. Um, I They've done like very valuable games and a lot of people uh, really respect them and I think help move forward in that regard. Oh, I, I refuse to play the first Mass Effect. I think I played half of it and was like, no. And I, st I did play part of the second to be fair, but I just, um, I, it was just a Citadel. I think I asked my sister at one point, I was like, is this really all the game is? And she was like, yeah. And I was like, oh, good. I don't want that. Oops. Sorry. Yeah, I was trying to close those in a stealthy way. <laughs> um. Okay, so another game in a franchise that is most beloved, uh, actually, is Age of Empires 2 HD Edition. And there was another Age of Empires remake. This one I found really interesting, though, for a very, like, particular reason. I kind of feel like the people who gave it a bad review, the critics, are trying to be edgy in that regard. I don't think the games are bad. I think these Age of Empire remakes are very faithful to the original games. They are a good way to kind of make the connection process like more modern between players. And it's a really good point for new people to launch into the franchise if they want to. We don't have a lot of RTS anymore, so I think we just kind of have to revisit the old RTS a little bit. Which is unfortunate, but nobody's really making it that's it is what it is like i go play halo 2 sometimes like what what am i supposed to do with my life uh there was one that said <laughs> i love how spicy critics get like when they commit to being like mean about a game they they there is commitment here for youngsters it's oddly out of date for the old stickers it's far from the original this is how the HD edition of the legendary strategy game Age of Empires 2 has turned out from one golden legacy to just broken pieces. Hopefully its community will put it together. Uh, someone else critiqued that it was a good graphic overhaul, but not much more. So he was saying basically the opposite. This guy was saying it's too different from the... This guy was saying it's just a graphic overhaul, which is fine. Uh, and this person was saying... Though it's still the competent RTS game it has always been, it can't be avoided that the age in Empire the age in Age of Empires 2 has become apparent. The HD edition shows once again why the game is a classic, but besides a functional multiplayer lobby, it just doesn't add enough to warrant the price tag. So again, if they updated the graphics, gave you a functional lobby, that's it. To me, this doesn't make sense. Because what people wanted was an updated version of Age of Empires. So I see something like this on Metacritic and I'm like, well, this is actually a, ba a bad game in like air quotes. 
that I think people should defend. Absolutely. Because there's nothing wrong with it. Also, the user score is higher. If you are ever on Rotten Tomatoes or Metacritic, and this is an opinion I'm going to give you and you should take as fact. <laughs> it's That's kind of aggressive, but I, I think you should. If the score is wildly different and the critic score is low, but the audience score is high, it's probably a good whatever. Like it's a good movie, a good album, a good video game. It doesn't matter. If it's the reverse and the audience score is really low and the critic score is really high, it's shit. Don't watch it. Don't bother. Like ever. Uh, I don't know why this is like the law, but it seems I I personally think critics, especially movie critics, are really out of touch. And I think video game critics are like well on their way to that too. Like they don't they're not playing games for fun. They want to be edgy and different, right? Think of <laughs> think of think of the people down here. Good graphic overhaul, but not much more. It's what the people wanted. We just wanted to play Age of Empires. We just wanted to play Age of Empires. That's all we wanted. Yeah, Kelly, I did say that because it's the right opinion. There's factually nothing wrong with my opinion. We could do a breakdown if you wanted to, but that's not why we're here. Like, there's a, there's a lot of things that we could talk about that would prove this opinion. I just think it's the correct opinion. So take take what you want from it, okay? But th this is this is it. <laughs> no, no, I agree. I agree. I agree. Okay. I think I think user scores are are much more important than than critic scores. And I think that almost makes these websites obsolete and that's kind of sad. Nobody uses critics anymore for video games anyways. They all they all go to Twitch stream and ask the Twitch streamer in the chat how they like the game. And sometimes that's okay and sometimes that's not. Like I I remember when Mario Golf, the new Mario Golf game came out and everyone just said like it's fine. But you're just playing golf. Yeah, literally. That's that's the thing. Actually, one of the only <laughs> one of the only um games that in my opinion has been revolutionary uh in the golf world, if you will, is uh hold on, let me let me see if this is. <laughs> I don't want to show you because it's it's really weird. You're gonna see it at some point, but like this game, I swear the people were like on on drugs or something who made it, which is fine. Okay, this is this is a this is a a trailer. Ah, I don't want to make it full screen. Sorry. Um, this is part of my childhood. Pop it over here. Uh, it's called Ribbit King. Uh, you're playing Frolf, not Golf. I don't remember the whole premise of it. But your golf ball is a frog. Um, for some reason there's a basket. I think you're going to different planets, I think. E3 was shit back in the day. I'm watching this, and this is kooky cra- this is crazy. But anyways, you get, like, all these different frogs and these different characters, and you have to, like, beat them? And to me, this is- this is revolutionary golf gameplay. Super Mario Golf will never live up to Ribbit King. Uh, Ribbit King is also a very expensive game now because nobody bought Ribbit King, so take, take from that what you will. It's a great game, though. Uh, anyways, uh, Halo 2. Sorry, Halo Wars 2 is the only Halo game that's like kind of like, eh. Uh, I was actually really surprised to learn that because I don't remember loving ODST or Halo Reach. I did play them when I was very young, and I, I don't think I fully understood, like, the mindset of Halo Reach, how devastating that game is uh, in terms of story. So I should probably, like, revisit that at some point. I don't have a lot to say about Halo Wars 2. I don't... It's kooky that they made an RTS out of Halo. That's just weird. We're moving on. This, in my opinion, is where it starts to get interesting. There are a lot of games with, like... 
I don't even want to say necessarily cult followings because I think a considerable amount of people play them and play them consistently. Uh, the fan bases are a little rabid, but that's fine. Uh, the first one being Dead by Daylight. Dead by Daylight does not get a good, especially from the user. That people are like, Dead by Daylight is a shit game. And to be fair, it kind of is. Like, I, I, I've played it a lot. It's pretty much the same thing all the time. The maps are different in quotations, as in, like, the generators are in a slightly different area. The objective is always the same, and people run the same perks. It's an extremely stale four versus one horror game with a buttload of potential. And I think they're going to fix some of it um, with the upcoming update, where you have to... Uh, the killer will now have, like, a radius, and if you're too close to the person that's been hooked they can essentially unhook themselves for free. I think that's really going to change a lot, but it's not going to change enough. And the changes that they do make are very dramatic. They fall into the thing that League of Legends falls into, uh, and Heroes of the Storm, Pokemon Unite, any of those little MOBAs that, like, Dota 2 tweaks by, like, I swear, like, a 0.1% change. They're like, okay, we think we overtuned this. We're going to change it now. We're going to change it by like a tiny amount. And then they'll just like keep going. Uh, but these other like kooky, crazy developers just like slash everything in half. And I think that's what happened in Dead by Daylight because they had made a lot of changes that a lot of people were really excited for and had kind of put out the basic opinion, I guess, like the Dead by Daylight critiquer people were like, this is a good movement forward and we think it's going to like make gameplay new and exciting. And it just swung it so hard for the players, which already survivors already statistically win way more than killers do. Killers win like a marginal amount of the game. Uh, so there's that. Uh, anyways, they... That wasn't the end of my point. There's that. That wasn't the end of my point. Um, it, uh... They changed one, one perk, Pop Goes the Weasel, which was one of the killer's only ways to actually win. Pop Goes the Weasel. And they, I think that's, like, not played anymore at all. Uh, they just, like, ran it into the ground. They said decrease by 75%. Nobody ever needs to off goes the weasel again when a better way to balance a game would be to bring other perks that you want to see played to the power level of pop goes the weasel if you like the way that pop goes the weasel works for killers and you think it's a good thing tune everything else to be around pop goes the weasel and you'll figure it out in time tune everything else for survivors to be around die hard and you'll figure it out you can't prevent some of the perks are just going to be shit because they're bad concepts but you can take them out of the game if you want something new I'm way more interested that were announced for the Dead by Daylight universe in the anniversary stream. Jack, I have not watched the anniversary stream. Uh, if you want to fill me in, you could. You saying they'll fix it when Nick come, comes into the game? Yeah, I am. So what? I think Dead by Daylight will be fixed by Nicolas Cage's presence. There's nothing wrong with me saying that. I think uh, I'm going to play that game again, but only to be Nicolas Cage, and then I'll probably drop it after, like, I play it for two days. I'll be like, well, it's old again. Hooray. I really wanted Nicolas Cage to be a killer, though. Um, I'm a little disappointed that wasn't announced. I think he would have been a really cool killer. Uh, Turgeman, uh, welcome in. It's good to see you. Uh, hope you're having a wonderful Monday. They're making a story-based single-player game, and another studio is working on a PC game, both in the Dead by Daylight universe. That's actually pretty cool. I know a lot of people really love that dating sim that they <laughs> they made uh i didn't play it myself i watched other people play it um but some people yeah just went a little kooky for that say it that way i don't i don't understand dating simulators but if you want to play them you go you go right ahead so i think dead by daylight i think actually dead by daylight should have a worse score than it does but obviously these people feel differently from me. Um, they think that this game is the right amount of kooky to like hook people. 
Uh, 2016, Dead by Daylight is a good game, but it lacks content. Hope to see more soon. 2016. They were like, or more content, different maps. Well, I'm going to assume they meant like different maps, different things like that. Like make the game a little more like, yeah, out there. 2016. I remember when Dead by Daylight was announced. Uh, this was actually one of the pieces that I think I wrote about. Because I remember, I think Dead by Daylight, if I'm remembering correctly, was a Kickstarter game. And it was actually like a lot of, they hooked people in by saying like, it was either Michael or someone else was going to be in it on release. They were like, we're making a game for this character, basically. Uh, now here we are. Might have been the Halloween guy. Is that Michael? I don't fucking know, dude. Uh, there were no licensed killers on release. I'm thinking of a totally different game than disregard everything. Disregard everything. Michael Myers was the second killer to be added. Okay. Okay. There's been a couple Dead by Daylight, Dead by Daylight lookalikes. And I thought another one just came out, like the Texas Chainsaw Massacre game. I think I am thinking of the Friday the 13th game, yeah. I think I think you're right. Um I think there's a lot to be said though for Dead by Daylight, and I probably didn't I feel very scattered when I when I when I do the um the whole time. Uh I think there's a lot to be said for Dead by Daylight, but honestly, like just like sum it up is just kind of a shit game. And I think it could be really, really good. And that's actually what pisses me off the most about it. I love the concept of a 4v1 horror that just has an immense amount of replayability and flavor in it. And I think it's run too hard into the ground by the strict meta that they place themselves into. And if they figured out how to balance and they hired someone who knew how to balance games correctly and how to spend time on games, they would be good. Uh, you could probably do a whole pod podcast of thinking about Dead by Daylight and the journey the interactions between the devs and the player base. Are we in the defense of bad games or are we talking them to the ground? No, we are like, yeah, we're no, we're gonna get there. We're gonna get there. We're talking we're talking um about some of the games that got bad scores on Metacritic. Um I think Dead by, like I said, I think Dead by Daylight deserves a worse score than it than it has, but that's that's my opinion. Uh and this is actually another game that I hate Ark personally. I don't know why I picked these two games back to back, but I think it is important to talk about them. Uh, the reason why I hate Ark is because I'm pretty sure when it was still in early access, they announced that they were going to be releasing a paid DLC. I was pissed. I was like, that's not how you do things. You need to fully release the game. I don't think it runs well. It has terrible optimization. I've never been able to run it on any machine I've ever had. Um, and I just don't think it's fun. But uh, obviously the people think it's okay. Like the, this game has a real, uh, this is another like cult following game, which is why it's back to back with Dead by Daylight. Uh, the Switch port is hilarious to me. This is what caught my eye originally. It is one of the worst rated games on Metacritic. It has 29. Like, I was on the last page of Metacritic and all of a sudden Ark was there and I said, what is that game doing here? Uh, and then, yeah, it turns out <laughs> it turns out the Switch port was really bad and really broken and I don't think they ever fixed it. This game, though, like I said, there's not really a lot of optimization in Ark. They didn't really try to make it so that it could run. I think historically we've seen a few games that have optimized extremely well. Breath of the Wild, um, Tears of the Kingdom, World of Warcraft, and a few others uh, have really good optimization that I can think of off the top of my head. And then there's this on Fool. Also on iPhone. <laughs> I mean, can we figure out? Oh, there's no score. It's only based on three... Uh, reviews. Arc Mobile is one of the most impressive games that you can find on your smartphone. Uh, 
Arc Survival Evolved has some nice ideas and it works surprisingly well on mobile, but it's still shackled by the problems of the genre. Okay. That makes sense to me. Uh, so Arc Survival Evolved, though, gets 5.7 from users, which is better than the 2.8 for the Nintendo Switch. Uh, it, anyways. Um, but obviously, like, a lot of people really enjoy Arc, and I think that's what matters most with a video game and the same can be said for dead by daylight um if you like a survival game like the, i i think this is actually probably one of the best games that you could ever get into because it, the the fact that arc arc does some very impressive things and things that it should be celebrated for one of which was um one of which was actually the real time dinosaur like thing like if you went offline and you had a server on Ark, your dinosaurs lost hunger so you could come back on and they'd all, they would all be dead. So you had to ask other people on the server to feed your dinosaurs and not steal them. Uh, and then you would get them back. I think Rust does something similar. Uh, and I, I applaud that. I think that's actually, if you want to do like a really survival based game, I don't think that's a bad idea at all. Uh, I, not my cup of tea. Survival games never are. I think there's just like a lot wrong with the genre in general. And I don't really think it's Ark's fault. And I don't think we have to be like, well, Ark is a really good example of what not to do in the survival genre because the survival genre in general is crap. Valheim is crap. I don't know what Valheim gets on Metacritic. I never want to play that game again. I hate it. And it was a really celebrated game when it came out. So maybe I'm just old and grumpy and crotchety. This is where the defense will start, though, a little bit, okay? <laughs> we do have a defense coming, I, p I promise. Um, they also forgot about it and they didn't make anything new for it. I mean, yeah, that's just like story story of every early access game, right? They forgot about it they and they moved on. There was actually one early access game that... Um, it was so good. I think it was called Roguelands or something. I, I loved Roguelands, uh, and the it's now out of early access. The developer went back to Roguelands, um, and after returning, they returned to Roguelands, though, after basically ditching the game, after having people buy it and, like, pay for it, and then they were making Magisite, which is essentially the same thing, just rebranded, and in, uh, sorry in a slightly different way that they made it. And Magisite is also out of early access now. I th No, I think there's been good early access games. I don't think that's entirely fair. I think Hades was a good early access game, as you said. I think um, Oxygen Not Included was a really good early access game. Roguelands and Magisite, if it wasn't for the drama of the developer, were good games. Poor Keeper is another fantastic early access game. If you want to get really technical, Minecraft was definitely an early access game. That game was available in alpha to buy. That was very cheap at the time, but Minecraft is sort of, I don't know, the leader or something in a sense of early access. Those are just the ones off the top of my head. I'm sure there are other great access games. I think roguelikes do tend to be early access because... Rogue, I imagine it's really hard to test bugs for roguelikes. I could be really wrong, but you have to, because it's generated, like the chances of finding every single bug for yourself would be really tough. And I think an easy way for developers to get quality testing that make people pay and then just have them send them the bugs. I have not seen any shoot roguelike yet. I don't know if you mean like top down roguelikes, like um Enter the Gungeon or Wizard of Legend, but I don't think I'm Prison Architect did well through early access. <laughs> um is that the one where you have to es no, that's the escapist. Like is Prison Architect the one where you make the prison? Like like little the little Sim City? Baldur, we'll see how Baldur's Gate 3 looks like when it's released. Is that coming out early access as well? Larian Studio asked people to sign an NDA, come to their studios, um, and be there for the day. So work. Uh, 
I remember playing Prison Architect on a... I don't know if that was like a different or something, but I just remember I remember having like a PS, like a PC disc, uh, for Prison Architect, uh, but it might have been a similar game, I'm sure. But can I turn the sensitivity up? Yes, somehow. Um, so I have a noise gate on. I think I should just turn it off for now and I'll fiddle with it later. It's probably the noise gate. Uh, the noise gate was mostly for my keyboard, so I'll have to like tweak that a little bit. Okay. Um, this is, this is what I really, really want to talk about. <laughs> uh, th there's two folds to it. They're both independent related. One has to do with how Metacritic scores things, because I think it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. I was looking at games that don't have a score versus games that do have a score, and it seems to be a very awkward sort of threshold. Uh, the second is, though, the horror, independent horror genre. <laughs> I personally like the game, maybe. I sort of like the game we're about to talk about. So I'm a little biased here. But I want to talk about Hello Neighbor 2. Or Hello Neighbor, sorry. Which um, gets a 38 on Metacritic from the critics. And a 4.9 <laughs> from the users. Uh, the critics are 17 negative reviews and 2 mixed reviews. I think Hello Neighbor is a really interesting case to deal with, though, because a lot there was one review. I it might have been IGN that published it, and it was essentially this guy saying, "Look, Hello Neighbor, Hello Neighbor is kind of a wild game. If you didn't get in on the ground and do alpha and figure out the puzzles with everyone in part of the community, it doesn't." really make a lot of sense like you missed out on what this game was but hello neighbor has a huge following it has a ton of merchandise the guy has committed to making hello neighbor this like global franchise that dominates things i think there's been three or four games at this point we played the second one actually when i returned to streaming in december we played the second one on stream which only took like 40 minutes to actually beat but i think we took like 12 hours or something so that was not embarrassing at all i remember people going nuts for this on tumblr when it first started hello neighbor like <sighs> there was really something about this game i i did play it when i first came out because i was very interested in the premise i thought it was a really good idea for a horror film i also remember being so angry at the game though i got it for christmas that i was going to demand my money back because i was so pissed at the developers i thought they did such a terrible job and the puzzle that broke me in the end was the one where you had to throw an orange at a painting and get the specific painting right and then a door opened and i think like we had to like dig through google to find the answer because there were just a lot of really unhinged puzzles and a lot of ways to solve the puzzles so it became tough and none of the puzzles made sense they didn't repeat any of the mechanics they just expected you to know the jump scares and the vibes were really well received i think so the jump the jump scares got really old really fast to me like you you would hear the neighbor coming right and it's always it's like this popo pum pum sound or something and then he would catch you and he just like stare like this weird like into the distance like past you. Uh, so it kind of fell off pretty fast. But I really liked the idea. And it was essentially Disturbia as a video game, which I like the film Disturbia. I think it's a good film. So yeah, suddenly it was a 4v1 multiplayer game. Secret Neighbor was weird. <laughs> I don't I played it a couple times. I did not understand what was going on in Secret Neighbor. I also didn't understand what was going on in Hello Neighbor, though, to be fair. Do I think the game has issues? Yes. It's not horrendously buggy. It's a little weird. I think the biggest pitfall to the game, to Hello Neighbor, is 
definitely the learning AI neighbor because he starts doing weird shit and it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, that was a different game, Jack. Secret Neighbor was a separate game. I think that was the second title to come out in the Hello Neighbor franchise was Secret Neighbor. I don't think Hello Neighbor deserves a 38 on Metacritic, though. This is one of the worst reviewed games on Metacritic ever. I think it's on, like, there's, like, two... 200 and something pages and if you like click forward like two or three pages there's hello neighbor like right at the back and that one really surprised me so then i started googling for other horror games because i got curious <laughs> i like really memed on this game like i memed sorry on this game hard when it came out and i played it on stream so i am very hesitant to say that it's not a bad game I just think Choo Choo Charles is actually pretty good. I think Hello Neighbor's better, and Choo Choo Charles gets a significantly better rating. But I think Choo Choo Charles is actually a good game. I think the concept is immaculate. I think the execution was really off. It's very easy to avoid the train for a majority of the game. I barely had a run in with the train. They make it seem like you have to keep your train with you at all times, but you really don't. I would leave my train and go do a section of the a huge section of the map and then I'd return to my train. Uh, and I'd, I'd be without it for like, I think like 30 minutes at a time. I think we beat the game in only like two or three hours. So it was, in my opinion, it was a little overpriced just because it was like two hours of content. But I had a really good time with this game. And I think if they made a second game, which I'm hoping they do... Uh, they're going to learn a lot, and they're going to make it look even better. Uh, the island and the people itself look terrible. The horror train looks great. Charles looks amazing. Like, I'm all for this creepy spider skeleton thing. I think this is actually a really great idea. Um, I think some of these reviews are a little unhinged. Game looks like it was made by an 100-people team. Great game. Recomment worth the wait. Choo choo choa poa. I don't think that's a very valuable review, but maybe that's just me. <laughs> that's a poet. While it may not have a lengthy playtime or genre-defining mechanics, Choo Choo Charles is nonetheless an impressive project created by a single person. I had no idea. I'm not saying that makes the game better, but it does make it more impressive. I love the games that people are coming out with by themselves. I think that's that's really cool that people are starting to like take hold of the reins and do it all on their own. If you're craving some dumb spooky fun centered around upgrading your own train while it's trying to derail a demon spider locomotive, a very specific craving indeed, then look no further. I think Gaming Nexus has a very fair opinion on this. Uh, rating 7 average. I, I think the issue, the, the main issue that I take is like, why does 70 become yellow on Metacritic? Why is average bad? Also, why is 7 average? But why is average bad? It's just an average game. There's nothing wrong with it. It didn't blow me out of the water and I don't know if I'd recommend Choo Choo Charles to people but I would I would not recommend a lot of games to a lot of people that I play because I play weird ass shit anyways uh and I think if we had if we were writing off bad games like consistently every time Choo Choo Charles has bugs Choo Choo Charles does not look good and to be honest like the gameplay is not that innovative the funny thing is, is it's a train. That's it. And it's a horror game and we're really starved for horror. So in this case, we're okay with the game because, well, we don't get a lot of horror games and, you know, maybe we should just like let it be blah, blah, blah. And we're like, this is regardless of price. We're not going to talk about price right now. And then we get something like the Gollum game, which is essentially the same, <laughs> the same thing. It doesn't have good graphics. It's not innovative in its franchise, but it plays okay but because we get a lot of stealth adventure games, we're like, no, this game is crap. Nobody buy it. No one buy it. If we're holding like Gollum to those standards, we need to hold other games to those standards. 
And so why aren't we holding Choo Choo Charles or Hello Neighbor or um, all these other little games that come out to the standard? From everything I've seen, I don't think the Gollum game plays okay. Okay, I don't know, Jack. I, I saw a few clips where it looked it looked like it was fine. Like, I don't know. Like, it wasn't, like, game-breaking, but it wasn't the worst thing ever. Which is what I would say Choo Choo Charles is as well. Like, it wasn't the worst thing ever, but it wasn't... I wouldn't be like, wow, this game has immaculate controls. I just think the basis of this game is cool. And I think if they do another, they'll, like, have learned a lot and hopefully have a higher budget. Seventy is bad. So when Sterling gave Se Zelda seventy, people people can tell them they suck. Uh, did somebody give Tears of the Kingdom like a, a seven or something? Is that what I'm hearing? <laughs> that's kind of, that's kind of funny to be honest. Go against the grain, random critics. He regularly seems to miss ledges that he's meant to grab to, or just jump in the wrong direction, fall through grab points, just die sometimes. Oh, okay, so it probably plays like similarly to the original Assassin's Creed. Like, no no shade, but like, let's let's be honest, the original Assassin's Creed played like trash. Like the free running made absolutely no sense uh in that game. And yeah, you just died all the time. You jumped the wrong way, died all the time. A lot of the issues persisted through the second one too. I think it was only when like Brotherhood and Revelations came out that Assassin's Creed started to like get it down. I don't know what it is about free running. Like maybe it's actually genuinely hard to program. I don't know. Ask a game dev. <laughs> Somebody else. And I guess, like, again, people are holding it to a different standard because one's from an independent guy who made Choo Choo Charles and one is from this random studio that, like, actually tries to, like, put together correct games. But it just feels so quirky to me that, like, we're just, like, holding them to such different standards is what it feels like. The Jim Inquisition, if you ever saw the YouTube, gave Breath of the Wild 7 and the new one 7. I understand. I understand to a certain point. Um, because, uh, if this guy really loves Legend of Zelda, and I don't know if he does, Breath of the Wild, like, is not a, really a Legend of Zelda game? Uh, sorry, they, yeah, if, if they, um, if they really like Legend of Zelda, it's, it's not a Legend of Zelda game. I think Tears of the Kingdom gets a lot closer from everything I've seen, a lot of the puzzles like look similar to a Zelda game it's a very different game but Breath of the Wild is just like a little kooky and they were testing the waters and saying like hey do you guys uh like open world Zelda and we said yes we're fucking hoes for open world Zelda and they said all right you can have another one then I guess you can have Tears of the Kingdom um but I would still consider, like, Majora's Mask, Ocarina of Time, Wind Waker, Skyward Sword, probably Twilight Princess are all better Zeldas, in my opinion, than Breath of the Wild. But we won't talk about that for too long, because that's, like, a whole different thing. No matter how bad the games that came out so far, all new games on Switch sell better and better every year. Absolutely, because more people are buying Switches, and more people are realizing that the nostalgia that they have and like the desire that they have right now is for like in my opinion just like Nintendo games and games that will bring them comfort it's what we need right now the world's in a kooky place uh I, I didn't mean to switch to no pineapple left behind I don't I think I was looking at this out of curiosity I played this game actually when it first came out and did review it there's no review right now but like up here I already checked I don't know how your reviews get on Metacritic I don't know if you submit them or what uh but this this game was really interesting because it was, it was made by a teacher and it was talking about uh just the education system and their the whole premise was you had to get every pineapple through uh, and actually digitally downloaded uh, says if one if a player who stumbles upon this title on steam becomes inspired to make serious educational reform after watching their students get dehumanized into tropical fruit no pineapple left behind will have all been worth it i thought it was a really good game uh it i wouldn't like charge a lot of money for it because it was like a one and done but it it was like a couple hours and it just like it it felt like it left you with a lesson so it was interesting anyways um 
What I wanted to talk about, though, is... I think Metacritic has, like, zero standards. And the reason why my case for this is... Core Keeper um, has two pieces... I don't think these are reviews, though. Sorry, this is an early access review. And from uh, Destructoid and then GameStar. What the hell? I don't speak German. English. What? What the hell is this? They want to track me? No. I don't want them to. I'm not going to accept all your cookies just because you want me to pay for something. What the hell was that? Well, we'll read GameStar's thing. In its current state, Core Keeper is no replacement for Terraria or Minecraft. That, however, doesn't make Core Keeper a bad game. Quite the opposite. I like that take. Uh, but yeah, there's an early access review for Core Keeper. <laughs> uh, slimes keep on slipping, slipping, slipping. That's cute. Uh, it was a very cheap game. Uh, I think when they wrote it, it was only like twelve ninety nine. I think Core Keeper is an excellent game. It has felt like a finished game the whole time I've played it. Uh, and yet there's zero critic reviews. There's no meta score. Uh, it's to be announced early access. Okay. Then uh, you have Played Up, which is not early access at all, by the way. Uh, and there's no meta score yet. Two reviews. Okay, great. Then there's Wobble Dogs. <laughs> uh, I don't really remember why I decided to search if Wobble Dogs was on the site, but I did. I was, I was, I was curious. Uh, Wobble Dogs is to be announced early access. Wobble Dogs has a score. Why are we, why are we reviewing games that aren't out yet? This is part of the problem with early access. This could significantly change, and yet people are writing reviews. And they're like, this is what the game is. No, you can do an early access review or a preview. I think preview is the better word. But this random person just wrote a review one year ago. Wobble Dogs has been out for a year? What the hell is this game? Uh, anyways, Wobble Dogs gets a really good score. So say what you want about that. Uh, and then... And then there's Little Inferno, which, like, this is kind of just out of left field. So sorry, there's no good segue into Little Inferno. Uh, 2012. This one pisses me off a lot. Little Inferno is a fantastic game, by the way. It's very entertaining. It's, like, maybe five to ten hours. And then that's it. That's the game. The game's done. Uh, it's not that expensive. It's made by the people who made World of Goo. Little Inferno's a ton of fun. If it ever goes on sale, like, on Steam. Is it on Steam? Yeah, it is on Steam. I would recommend uh, picking it up. I think it's it's a really, really good play. And then, and then people sit around, though, and they go, it's been ages since I wasted five hours so pointlessly, I felt like a victim of an exceptionally malicious prank. This isn't even, like, a review. This is, like, a soundbite to try and hook you in. Well, guess what, CD Action? I'm never going to go get issue 1 of 2013, page 67. So you, de you, de you deal with it on your own time, okay? Um, this is a story game, though, in my opinion. Little Inferno's a full, fl full, full stop story game, okay? And they're just like, nah, I don't like it because someone, someone in here says that they don't like it because they can't replay it. There's not much of a reason to play it after you've beaten it. There's not much of a reason to play it after you've beaten it. Is there any game where there's a reason to play it after you've beaten it? Is there any game? Because after you've beaten a roguelike, even for instance, now beat is like a loose term because usually you have to beat them multiple times, like do a successful run multiple times. But after you've beaten a roguelike, there's no reason to go back and play the roguelike again. 
There's no reason to go back and play Little Inferno again. He's absolutely correct because you've beaten the game. You've enjoyed the game. Move on with your life. But no, he's going to give it a seven because there's no reason to play it again after you've beaten it. Okay, well, fuck off. That doesn't make the game bad. That doesn't make the game bad. Um, hi, welcome in, Obsidian. I hope you're doing well. I hope you're having a great Monday. You didn't have fun with Wobble Dogs? And Valider, I had a blast with Wobble Dogs. No, I just, like, I just think it's so wild. This is, like, talking about, like, uh, how Core Keeper gets, like, zero reviews, even though, like, there's an in progress and unscored section suddenly and then wobble dogs which is also an early access all of a sudden gets critic reviews like what the hell hold on i'm gonna open my steam i'm i don't know if wobble dogs is actually in early access or if they just never updated the page but you would think the page would be updated store page Oh, it's, it's already in my library, so I don't even think I can see if it's early access or not. I just don't understand. I don't understand, like, the choices that Metacritic makes. That's what I'm trying to get at. Um, no, Wobble Dogs was a great game. I had a ton of fun with Wobble Dogs, and I still play it sometimes on my own, because I think, I think it's just really good. I'm just... I think I'm a little bit angry because I I think uh, maybe this is like too much or something. No, it's not too much. This is the correct opinion. <laughs> Everybody listen up. I've got another correct opinion and you're all going to enjoy it and like it. Video game reviewers have to be able to play and beat the game and I know that doesn't sound very controversial but wasn't it like Doom the remake of Doom where like the guy couldn't beat the like he could not play the game and so he was like this game is bad like it's not a good game there's nothing good about it or whatever the hell it was you can't beat the game if you if you can't play the game if you are not intelligent enough if your reflexes are not good enough to beat a game you have no right saying whether a game is good or bad you you actually just shouldn't have a job doing what you're doing in my opinion they can't play Baldur Gate 3 because they will be asked to review it in two days um I, that's a huge problem as well is like not giving enough time to critics but that's not the critics fault I'm gonna like put that on the game companies themselves like if you give a game critic two days to play your game it's not getting a full review like it's just not it's inhumane and it's not fair unless it's like a three hour game or something it's not fair to ask someone to beat your game in two days that's on you as a game developer that's like your own shitty job that you decided that this game that's probably going to take a lot of people like 80 hours to beat they get for two days even two weeks is not enough time for most games they need to get those games to review critics like a month before the game comes out i think that's fair maybe that's just me i think that's fair i don't even know how early they would get them for like the final fantasy from square enix because square uh just decides to remove the embargo like a month ahead of time they're like yeah you can uh, publish reviews if you want to i guess Go ahead. Why not? What can you do in two days? Anvil Eater? Incredible question. Incredible question. <laughs> I think a large part of the issue, though, too, is just how things age and will things be okay, like, in the end type thing, right? Because I'm even, like, looking at... I, I, just, I just searched up um, one of my favorite game franchises here, uh, which is Shenmue. Uh, I've spoken about this many, many, many times. Uh, I don't need to talk about it again, but I'm gonna. And Shenmue 2, uh, I don't know if they have the first Shenmue on here. I don't think they do. It's, like, really fucking old. Shenmue 2, 8880. Shenmue 1 and 2, which I've played the remasters. They're very similar. 72, 75. Where did those points go? What happened? I am guarantee you, we're going to click on this in a second, guarantee you, it's going to be like the controls are dated. Uh, that's a nice review. 
Okay, it's considered acceptable to play. Okay, so obviously it was released buggy. Shenmue is part of the gaming history, and there's a reason that it has continued to be revered all this time, but please remember what you are getting into when buying the games. It looks a little shinier, and it is, of course, the first time the two games have been available as a collection on a console that isn't the Dreamcast. But if you have never played these games before, expect a little resistance. It may be worth holding on a little while and picking it up in the inevitable future sale. It, it just, it feels like it's going to be... Uh, certain elements are showing their age, and there are some annoying bugs that should hopefully be patched out in time. Modern audiences, though, will still have to overlook some serious rough edges to find out what the big deal is. It just disappeared. Like, ten points just disappeared. Disappeared from the face of the earth because they were like, we don't like it anymore, it's dated. Opinions are allowed to change, but if we're going to try and decide that something is fact is like actually good or bad then it can't magically change by 10 points in like 20 years. That's not how it works. Is it good or is it bad? You can't like be like Citizen Kane. Oops, that was my whole screen. Sorry, guys. <laughs> you can't be like Citizen Kane is good. But it's only good like at the time. That doesn't make sense. Square, the reason I stopped using my gaming email, you are a journalist one time and you get bombed. Um, I uh, had to just like beg people to like take me off of lists. And I wish I hadn't at this point because I've come back to like having opinions and like yelling about things. But um, I just like it was it was too much. Um, I just like begged people. I think I found the website that I was listed on and told them to take me off of it. I was like, please, I just I don't want to do this anymore. Um, anyways, uh, that's like my opinion, and I don't even really know if we defended bad games that much. Um, but I just wanted to talk about bad games. <laughs> just wanted to talk about bad games for a while. <laughs> I probably needed someone on for this topic to discuss the issue with, but I think, I think, um, just so much of the problem in the gaming industry is people don't actually know how to play video games anymore and don't know how to enjoy them anymore. And I think part of it is, is we have like a bunch of old people like me running around playing video games still and talking about them, interviewing them. And, um... I'm old. I don't like things like Life is Strange, okay? I'm too old for it. I'm too old for this shit. I don't want a story game. I don't want Dear Esther. I don't want anything like that. I just want to play a game where I shoot people and occasionally there's a cutscene and then I go, that was fun. That was a nice cutscene. That was a nice story. I'm back to I'm back to killing people. Actually, uh, one of my favorite story games that I've ever played is Spec Ops The Line, uh, which is... I don't think it took that long for me to beat it. It was recommended to me by a friend. It only took four and a half hours to get through it. Uh, and it was just like a really, really good story about PTSD. Oh, it looks a little rough around the edges now. The graphics at the time were amazing. Uh, I'm not going to say that anymore, though. I really appreciated Spec Ops Line though because it did not sugarcoat anything. I don't like I don't love shooters like Call of Duty or Battlefield or whatever. Um, I just think it like makes it look too pretty, too glamorous. You're missing Crash Bandicoot games. I think it's like a lot of franchises that I miss, but I'm also like just okay with embracing something new. If new games were like better than they are, and I think that's part of the issue and part of the reason why I get upset when people like come out and like shit on games all the time is because like first of all, developers are always releasing broken games now for whatever reason. Let them do their thing, I guess. They'll figure it out one day. <laughs> they can't do it. And how do you not know that you're releasing a bad game, especially from a company like CD Projekt Red, who repeatedly releases these games that just have bug after bug after bug what's going on are your 
QA testers lying to you? Do you not have good testers? Are you just living your life in a terrible way? Um, I don't know. Don't ask me. Do you guys have anything you want to talk about? I expected high five. <laughs> that was so demanding. Sorry, I don't know what that was about. I just like, I got grumpy all of a sudden really hard. Like... I expected Hi-Fi Rush to be like that type of game and they decided that I need to do quick time events. Uh, I think... I'm really surprised actually you're not... Are you enjoying Hi-Fi Rush and Blader? Because it's definitely not your type of game. Like that, that really came out of left field. I think even the new one I like because you shoot stuff and then the story is mid plus. You have everything on easy mode and Valader. Have you you've played Hades, right? Because Hades has like a god mode or something. I don't even have combos. I am um, a game that I really loved uh, playing. I don't. I don't know if you can play the first one easily uh, anymore. Is um. Fantasy Star Online. I used to play Fantasy Star Online Blue Burst a lot. Uh, and Valader, you might like that game. It's very repetitive, which I actually love. I like running the same dungeons over and over again. And there was like robots. My sister always played um, a robot shooter. Uh, is it on Steam? I don't know, actually. Excellent question. I know the second one is, but the second one's like way different um, from the first. So I don't I've played Fantasy Star Online 2 a little bit. Um, it's okay. It's very... It, it, it's extremely different. And I think, like, I was really hoping that Fantasy Star Online 2 would be, like, the same thing. And it's not. Uh, yeah, I played Blue Burst, though, a lot. It's... It's basically like a private server, like in World of Warcraft or something, um, or whatever, but not. Actually, one of the drama, one of the drama that I saw right now in the gaming community is <laughs> there was there was a very funny post on the Reddit World of Warcraft Classic subreddit. Um, sorry, that was a very repetitive statement. Uh, and it basically was like the mods coming out and saying like, look, like. World of Warcraft Classic is shit now. Um, so you guys can talk about private servers again if you want to. Uh, they're like, Blizzard's not holding up their end of the bargain. So we don't care. Do whatever you want. And I was like, wow, this is really... Uh, it's really... Really going well. I think it's because they stuck to an original timeline in Wrath of the Lich King. Which was not good when Wrath of the Lich King came out. Because a lot of people were still progressing. And then a new raid came out. And they, they, they stuck to it. And so people are still progressing uh, and getting the armor that they need. And people uh, are pissed. As they should be? Question mark? I don't know. Anyways, honestly, like, I am all talked out. I, I'm just angry. And I just wanted to hit go live and be, like, angry on stream and yell at you guys. I have all of this recorded as an Audacity file. And I'm going to bet when I actually have time to uh, sit down and edit a lot of my Audacity stuff, which won't be until, like, it won't be until uh, probably, like, December. I'm going to listen to half of it and be like, this is complete shit. <laughs> Why did I say half of this stuff? <laughs> You're downloading World of Warcraft again? And Blader, when was the last time you played? I haven't played since, um, it hasn't been long. I played, a, like, the smallest amount of Shadowlands. I haven't gone back for Dragonflight at all, though. Probably 2016. 2016 World of Warcraft. I don't remember what the expansion was. <laughs> glug, glug, glug. Leave me alone! Leave me alone! You didn't play Legion then, did you? That came out in 2016. Oh, that was such a good expansion. World of Warcraft is free to play? Ain't no way. I'm going to download World of Warcraft if it's free to play. Are 
Are you talking about the free till 20, level 20? Um, Legion was, uh, <laughs> Legion was the one, I shared the one, uh, the cutscene with Illidan. Legion was essentially, Gul'dan came from an alternate timeline in Warlords of Draenor, back with an Illidan skull, revived Illidan, and was like, Illidan will now do my bidding, and Illidan was like, you know, and Illidan suddenly became a good guy, and there's like this weird alternate timeline shit that goes down, it makes absolutely zero sense, but also it makes all the sense in the world, the story was actually really incredible, and they did a great job, and you had like five different zones, and you could do them in any order, but every zone had a major cutscene, uh, one of them was the Illidan cutscene, one of them was Ysera dying, which, like, a ton of people, like, cried during the freaking dragon dying. And then there was, uh, the one with Sylvanas and Greymane, which was very cool. As a big lore nerd, I was like, this is, a lot is happening right now. I'm really enjoying it. Uh, but yeah, no, that's, uh, that's about it. No, you should Google it. It was it was really amazing. There was like the Emerald Nightmare was a raid. Um, you ended up there ended up with like a giant sword through Azeroth at one point, and then another expansion was like you have to heal Azeroth because Azeroth is actually a human or something. It's a Titan. It's not just a planet. Uh, it was it was pretty wild. I didn't play this. It was good. Uh, Anvilator is my favorite expansion by far. If World of Warcraft Classic ever gets to the point where they're doing Legion, and I kind of hope they keep just releasing, re-releasing them, because I think it'd be really funny to have two timelines of World of Warcraft going. Um, I would, I would play Legion again, hundred percent. I would, I would go back for that so fast. I've heard a lot of people say Dragonflight is really fun. I just don't have time for that shit. I don't have time to play World of Warcraft. Who am I? Like, a man with time? No. Uh, this is gonna, this is gonna require a lot of editing. That was all over the place. That's fine. It's fine. Nobody worry about it. I'll worry about it for myself. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll figure my, I'll figure my shit out. Uh, I did have one more thought pop into my head, though. Uh, something that I wanted to talk about briefly, but I don't know if I actually can remember it now. Uh, so that might, that might be it, unless I can think about it. You stopped it. Miss of Pandaria was good. Miss of Pandaria had my favorite companion book. Um, out of, because I I've read most of the World of Warcraft books at this point. Um, I like put time into it, or whatever you want to say. I don't know. I just thought it'd be fun to read them, and they were okay. Okay, none of them were amazing. There were some real terrible ones. One of them was a a Christy Golden one. Um. That was actually the battle for Azeroth Companion, which had Sylvanas and uh, little boy Anduin. Not little boy. He's a grown man. Uh, Anduin. A terrible book. Uh, I would not recommend it to anyone. I wanted to pass away while reading it. Anyways, uh, I have my favorite companion book, though, which was Vul'jin Shadows of the Horde. And this is when they started to like kind of position Vul'jin as like a main character. And then they made him... Uh, the leader for the horde and then killed him because Blizzard doesn't know what they're doing. Uh, and it really bothers me, to be honest. So, it is what it is. I'll never play World of Warcraft again. That's a joke. I probably will. Um, okay, I'm I'm done. I'm going to bed. I've been up since like 4am. I'm going to get up again at 4am. Um, let's go raid Cat. Cat's playing Tears of the Kingdom. Um, if you don't want to stick around, you don't have to, but, like, I don't know. Do what you want. Do whatever you want. There you go. You're heading back home. This is good timing. And later, uh, I hope you enjoyed them all. Um, I hope you had a really, really good time. So, 
Anyways, thank you all for being here. Um, I will not be live at all this week. Later this week, I will be live next Monday. Uh, keep an eye out on the YouTube channel. There are things happening there eventually. Um, I'm going to catch up on editing this week, though. So I'm hoping to get like fully caught up and then be fine. But also, the reality is I work almost like 60 hours a week, so it's probably not going to happen. Uh, no, you're allowed to lurk Obsidian. Please enjoy your lurk. And I hope you had a good time because I did, even though I was just yelling at you guys the whole time and angry. That's just my thing, though, I guess. So anyways, uh, it was good having you all here. So I will see you all next week.